My name is Falk Müller. I'm gynecologist from the University Medical Center in Hamburg, Eppendorf. And actually, my, one of my key topics on research is brain metastasis. So I was happy to share a session together with Professor Yen Chu Lu from Taipei in Taiwan on brain metastasis in breast cancer patients. And actually, it was focusing on two subgroups that are most relevant in this context, the HER2 positive and the triple negative patients. So we had a few presentations, of course, focusing on radiotherapy, on systemic therapy of HER2 positive patients, on anti-angiogenic therapy, and finally, on new treatment options. That was a quite exciting session for me, and um, I was happy to have so many questions and so much interest. In the session on brain metastasis in breast cancer patients, I was um, happy to give a presentation on HER2 positive patients. So for HER2 positive patients, we have on one hand a dramatic improvement in systemic therapy, prolonging over survival in the metastatic setting. And on the other hand, we have an increasing incidence of brain metastasis. So it is estimated that now 30 to 50% of those patients with metastatic HER2 positive disease will develop brain metastasis during the course of their disease. And this causes usually uh, an impairment of quality of life and also a much shorter overall survival. So new treatment options are urgently needed and there's a lack of evidence from the recent clinical trials because many of these trials really excluded patients with brain metastasis. So I summarized the existing data on compounds we have available, but also the data from new compounds like tucotinib, neratinib, and trastuzumab deruxtecan that show promising results uh, for patients also with brain metastasis. The main challenges on one hand are that many trials really excluded these patients, at least those patients with active brain metastasis, so with new diagnosed and untreated brain metastasis, so we have not so much evidence. And in this context, I think that the her 2 climb study that led to the approval of tucotinib after treatment with trastuzumab and pertuzumab as well as TDM1 in that trial um, was some pivotal trial because half of the patients had brain metastasis and of these patients, half of them had active or progressing brain metastasis. And from this cohort, I think we have some evidence that improved treatment with this tyrosine kinase inhibitor, but maybe also other compounds could really improve the outcome also of patients with newly diagnosed or active brain metastasis. And I think that's the direction we have to develop further trials. And we need, of course, much more trials on this group of patients with brain metastasis. 